I love Canva. It's a great way of app smashing and introducing different apps together. Now you can see here that I've signed up for a teacher account and that gives me access to other additional services. It means I can link to my Google Classroom and my Microsoft Classroom and it also gives me access to different um, templates that are available. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I love a template. Why? not use what someone else has created and there's so many of them linked exactly to what I might want to use in my own classroom. You can see here I have a couple of different backgrounds that I use regularly. I love a start stop continue, particularly good if I'm meeting with staff, but there's lots of different ones and all I've done is used the templates. So if I scroll back up what will you design today? I'm going to click on here and you see it's automatically on templates and I'm going to choose Jamboard here. I love a Jamboard with your class. And here you can see there's lots of different templates. Now, I think this is one that we use regularly with our kids, which is, of course, our what do we know, what do we want to know and what did we learn boards? So I'm going to rename it simply by clicking up here. So I'm just going to call it KWL chart and I'm going to say that's for my particular class that I want to work with. So I've done that and here it is. This is my template. Now I want to make it a little bit jazzier on the page so I'm going to hit animate um, and I think I want oh let's try disco I quite like that maybe a bit too much okay let's go with party as it comes on the page so what I want to do now I've got my board that's all I need to do I can change the text if I wanted to but I'm quite happy with those questions I'm going to click share and I'm going to scroll down to this download I have a couple of options here. I can download it as an MP4, but because I want to use it with my Jamboard, I am going to choose, uh, I can choose JPEG or I can choose GIF. I'm going to choose GIF so that it does all of that animation on my Jamboard. So I'm just going to click GIF and then I'm going to say download. And you can see that that has started to download now. Okay, so here I am. I've gone into my Google Drive just from my launch pad. I'm going to click on new and I'm going to, go to more and down to Google Jamboard. So let me click on that and it's going to open me up a blank Jamboard. So what I want to do is I want to set the background. So I'm going to click on set background. I'm going to go upload image. It gives me the option to browse or drag a file here. So I'm just going to browse for it. There's my little image. Click open and it's going to upload that for me. OK, so it's just finishing off uploading that image for me. And there you go. There's my animated GIF on my Jamboard. And I can simply share that with my learners just as I would normally by clicking on share. And then I can add people or groups and I can copy the link and post it into my Google Classroom. And that's quick and easy way of using it with Google Jamboard. So now I'm back on my launchpad and this time I am going to go into my Office 365 tab because I want to do exactly the same thing, but this time I'm doing it on whiteboard. So I'm going to go to my nine dots. I'm going to scroll down to whiteboard and that's going to load up for me now. So you can see I have an open page. I'm going to click new whiteboard. It's going to load up for me and then I'm simply going to click on create and it is an image that I want to upload. So I click on image. Again, search for that image. I know where it is in my device. Click on open. And there you go. It's on here. Now, you can see that on the whiteboard, I'm at 42%, but I can, of course, move this and make it bigger. It depends on the space that you are working with with your learners. You can make it, if I go to 100%, you can see that's pretty big for my learners to look at and I can move around. But you can decide what works best for you, especially if you're using this on an interactive panel, then you might want it to be that big. But you have the control of doing that. So once you've decided where you want it in terms of positioning, then what you want to do is you want to click on that image, go to the three dots and you want to lock it. That way then, when the learners are adding their information, either with the pens or with stickies, they can't move it around. And that's it. That's all there is to do when it comes to importing 
simple templates from Canva and app smashing with either Teams or Google Classroom. Following on from Pam's tutorial, we're going to look at creating some easy presentations using Canva. Now Canva is a free online tool. There is a paid for license, but you can sign up for free at canva.com. And on the home page, you can see there's lots and lots of different resources that we can create. And what we're going to do is show you how to use some of the templates, animation styles and other quick tools to make your life a bit easier. So first off, we're going to be looking at the predefined templates that we get on canva.com. So we can see there's a list of lots of different resources here. You can see presentations, whiteboards, videos, etc. We're just going to click on a presentation template. It's going to open up a blank resource for us and we can use the templates panel at the left hand side to pick a quick style to get started. It's just a case of scanning through until you find something you like. What we're going to do just now is use the end of year presentation template that we've got here and just use that as a basis. So already we can apply this to every page on the presentation. There's about 16 pages in total here and you can see by scanning through these that there's lots and lots of stuff already created here for us. Now you don't have to use this as is but you can you know, change it to suit your needs. It just gives you a very, very good quick start. Now one way to make your presentations really interesting is to incorporate animations where you can. Now above any slide you can see the animations tab and if you click on that tab it's going to give us access to lots and lots of different custom animations. So clicking on these gives us a little preview and obviously it's going to just make it a bit more interesting when your text or your images come into focus using the animation. Now to apply an animation just click on it and that animation is now applied to this, present, this particular scene. If you want to apply it to all of the instances of the slides you can see there's an option there to apply to all so that's going to apply that animation across every slide in your presentation but you can have different presentation animations between clips or you can have them all uniform and the same and here just going through the slides you can see the animations in work they do make it a bit more engaging and really really easy and simple to do on top of the templates we can also utilize quick style options in canva now by clicking on this i find it's just a really good way to refresh your eye um, you can see in the styles panel we've got lots of different choices and if we click on any of those it's going to immediately change the slide that we're looking at. We can also apply this to all slides in the deck and it's just going to quickly change this and maybe surprise you with some of the colours that you've got there. It's just a good way of keeping it fresh for your own eyes. If you've ever tried to source free music online it's quite hard to find stuff that's royalty free. Canva actually has an audio bank on the left hand side where all the music is broken down into themes or you can search based on the filters such as being paid or free, does it contain vocals etc. And when you're happy with a sound that you like, you can drag it onto your presentation. This will now play as your presentation is being presented. And if you download the file, it will be stored on the file as an mp4. You can change the volume, delete the clip, trim the clip or do what you need to do. Um, but again, just a really good free resource on there. And the final thing to do once you've completed all your hard work is to share it. So there's lots of different ways that we can share through Canva. You can either present it directly from Canva itself and the present button is going to allow you to just do a standard presentation or one where you record your face on it. Um, you can see here we're just going through some of the presentation clips I made for this video. Um, or the other option is to actually share it as a file. So you can go to the download option. You could print all of these to a, a JPEG or a PDF or you can keep them as a mo movie file where the animations will work or even a GIF. Um, so there's lots of different ways to share it and I hope that was a useful breakdown of some of the quick tools that you can use in Canva to make your life a little easier when you're doing things like presentations. Mm -hmm.